I'm now working on the air delivery system. that will channel these openings on the sides of the cylinder to a single point on top. For the collapsing point on top, I'm going to stack cut three pieces of basswood, uh, one eighth inch thick, to um, this re outer rectangle shape here. Stack cut. I'm actually going to leave those together and go back to that later. Got the middle one here. I'm just need to apply my pattern to it. A piece of tape. I notched the wood to help me uh, recreate the stack, although I left them taped in this case, which is a little easier yet. So I'm going to just spread some glue on here, clamp these two together, and I'll probably go in with a toothpick and spread the glue on the sides. So once you got, feel you have the glue spread out enough, on the, cause you don't want it to actually plug it either, then go ahead and, well, let's do it on this piece, glue the final layer on top, spread it out. We'll get the whole layer, but we don't want so much that it uh, fills in the channels any more than we already have. Just slap that on. Here's the, I guess what I'll call the air concentrator uh, cut out. I made one major error. That's, I intended for there to be a hole on the top in the middle to hook up to what will uh, feed the rectifier later. And I forgot to put that on my pattern and cut it out. So I'm going to attempt to just uh, make a couple lines here to center it and uh, attempt to drill a hole in there where I intended one to be in the first place. The circle came out all right. I have kind of a bit of sawdust inside that I had to clear out, but it seems fine. Now I'm going to work on the channels that will connect up from the cylinder to the air concentrator. I'm going to basically make them in a very similar way. I'll attach this to uh, three pieces of basswood as well, quarter, eighth inch. So I have my three layers here, cut to the basic shape. And now I'm going to take this middle layer out. attach my pattern on and cut out the interior air channel. To glue them, I'm going to do it just like I did with the air concentrator. First I'm going to coat this layer, glue that down, then I'm going to seal the grain with a, a toothpick and some glue, then uh, glue the top on, sandwich it all together.
air channels. One's all cut out. Come out looking like this. They have our openings on each end. They then will go on the side where the holes are. Carry the air up to the air concentrating piece. So. Like so. I'm now going to try to silicone these on here and onto the side of the engine. I'll probably only do half at a time. The real trick is I want enough on here that I get a seal, but not so much that I plug the hole. It turned out that almost all the connections on top ended up being plugged. The bottom was alright because I was able to stick uh, you know, something in there to keep the opening open while it glued in place. So I'm now taking it apart and uh, what I'm going to do, at least for this first one, is I drilled a hole through and I'm going to just kind of stick this uh, rod through it to keep the hole open. And I'm actually going to just use wood glue this time on top. It took quite a bit of rework to uh, get these all attached without plugging them with the, with the glue or the, the silicone. Now before going any further I needed to test it to make sure that the displacer actually worked before you know building a second one of these. And so for that I built this piston attachment. So it operates something like this. Ideally, you know, the air pressure would drive it. I ran it through a wide range of temperatures and it was a complete and absolute failure. There was no discernible pressure of vacuum generated whatsoever. It's pretty hard when you put that much time into something and it doesn't work at all. But I am not giving up yet. So let's look at what could be the problems and apply some things I do in my more conventional displacers and see if they might help. First, when the displacer is at 90 degrees, half of the hot side is exposed to the cold side at the same time, as well as most of the air being exposed to both. This would greatly reduce the temperature swing of the air. Second, too much air space. In my plunger type displacers, I would typically have a max of 12 millimeters or about a half inch air exposed to a side at a time. We can adapt the displacer like so to fix this. Also on my plunger type displacers, I would never only have a quarter inch separation between the hot and cold layers. I would typically have a minimum of two times the distance of open space, usually quite a bit more. This would require a rebuild of the displacer cylinder like so. After changing the displacer cylinder like that, it only makes sense then to modify the displacer one more time to match it more closely. So if I adapt my design, to match what I would do on my normal displacers, the first issue pretty much goes away. In my next video, I'll try some of these changes. Thank you for your patience, and thanks for watching.